Well, I suppose you all want to hear about that night too, huh? I've already told the authorities everything I know, which isn't very much. Uh, the name's Saul. Uh, well, that's not my real name. My real name's Solomon. You know, I was named after that king who was long on wisdom, but uh, my master prefers to call me Saul for short. But yeah, I was there that night. You know, I was, I'm one of the, well, they, sometimes they like to call me one of the servants here, but I think we, we all know, um, really, I'm a slave. You know, there's a bunch of slaves that work in this home. It was a strange night. And I've already said everything. If there was some kind of secret plan, I don't know anything about it because their leader, he was talking real strange-like, talking in code almost. Kept talking about vines and branches, and so when they said they, they couldn't find him, I said, I'm gonna go check out a vineyard. That might be where he went. I don't know. They were talking about other things, too. He was telling his followers that they might want to get a lawyer or, or an advocate or something, which kind of you know, goes along with, with the story, I guess. But I'm telling you, if there was some kind of secret plan for him to get away, I do not know it. They did not confide in me. In fact, I think they were going out of their way to talk in code, so I couldn't figure out what they were talking about. What a strange, weird night it was. And it all started the first day of the festival. Our master sent out old Caleb to fetch water. He sent out a man to get water. Come on, we all know that's women's work, right? Caleb was going to be humiliated. Oh, I asked the master, are you sure you want to send Caleb out there? Oh man, he, he is, he's not going to be able to go out and get the water real quick and come back unnoticed. No, first of all, he's a man. He's going he's, he's to be obvious something's going on. Second of all, he's a big, tall guy. He's going to stick out like a sore thumb out there, a tall man getting water. Unless, you know, maybe was it some kind of signal, maybe? I don't know, because right after Caleb came back with the water, those two strangers showed up. They knocked at the door, and they asked the master if there was a room that they could have to celebrate the Passover with their teacher. And so the master says, hey, Saul, that's me, remember? says, hey, Saul, show them to the upper room. So as I'm showing them up there, I realize that they, these guys are Galileans, which I didn't think was too weird. You know, we got all kinds of people out from the country come in for the Passover. Sometimes they even stay all the way through Pentecost. You know, if you, if you come in, have a long journey like that, come to the big city, you might as well stay for weeks. Passover to Pentecost, it's kind of a common thing. But as I was walking up, I, I, didn't, I didn't make the connection right away that these Galileans would be connected to that Galilean. But it turns out that they were. It's a strange night. So about that night, Caleb and I were going around. You know, there's a bunch of rooms in this house. Normally, you know, maybe there'd just be one family living here, but not during Passover. You know how it is in Jerusalem during the Passover. So many people packed in four or five families in one home. And that's how it was here tonight. We were going from room to room, trying to be all hospitable-like, you know, saying welcome and making sure everybody's got bread and wine and making sure everybody's feet get washed. Oh, it's my least favorite part of the job, washing those feet. Oh, disgusting. So we're doing all that. We go up to the upper room, but apparently they just couldn't wait for us. They had already brought their own slave, and he was getting ready. He had a towel wrapped around his waist. He had his own basin of water. He was, he was fixing to wash their feet. And then, this is, the, this is the part that just floored me. I couldn't believe it. It wasn't just anybody. It wasn't just a slave. It was their leader, that Jesus character, washing feet. What an outrage! These guys are anarchists. Don't they know? That there's union regulations and all? What's the world coming to? Just unbelievable. You know, there's... Take it from me. I, I know a thing or two about being a slave. 
Master says jump, I say how high. You, you, just, you do what you're told, you, you drink the cup that's poured for you, and that's it. You, you, don't, you don't say anything else about it. But bosses, they don't do that kind of stuff. Believe me, I've known a lot of bosses. Bosses don't do the cooking, they don't do the cleaning, they certainly don't do the washing of the feet. They came to be served, not to serve. If I, somehow, if I could ever become a boss, become a leader, if I could become in charge, you wouldn't catch me dead around stinky, grimy feet anymore. No, sir. No way. If you get a position of leadership like a boss, that's something that you, you grab and you hold on to for dear life. You don't ever let it go. Yet, that's what's so weird about this dude, this Jesus. He voluntarily dresses up like a slave and starts washing feet. Guy's off his rocker, if you ask me. So he starts washing the feet and he gets to the, gets to the guy that they call the rock. And the rock says, are you gonna wash my feet? No, never. And I was thinking, yeah, good on him. One of these guys has some sense. You know, all the rest of them have lost their minds, but at least the rock knows how things are supposed to be done. But then that leader, that Jesus fellow, he finally showed his true colors. You know, he's dressed like a slave, but he started ordering like a king. He said, unless I wash you, you and I are finished. Well, then the rock was like, yeah, okay, <laughs> wash me. What a strange night, like I said. I just, still trying to process it all. You know, then, uh, he proceeded to keep washing the other feet, and uh, Caleb, Caleb and I were kind of talking, and I was saying, man, this is the moment, I, I've, I've heard about this Jesus movement, but I know nothing good is going to come from this. This guy can't make up his mind who he is. Is he a servant? Is he a leader? This up, what kind of uprising, what kind of rebellion is this? This is destined to fail. And so Caleb and I kind of were arguing back and forth. I was like, we, we, should just, we should get in there and set things right. We should start washing the feet. Caleb was like, nah, let's just let him do it. He didn't have to twist my arm too hard. So we left them to it. We, we left the unleavened bread and the dipping sauce there, and, and we went. You know, we had a lot of other things to do. We had some other rooms to take care of, so we, we got out of there. We were doing our thing, but we had to come up there again eventually because it was the time of the meal to bring the bitter herbs. Everybody's favorite part, right? Yeah, the bitter herbs. Carried them in, but it looked like the people around the table had already stuffed their faces full of bitter herbs because nobody looked happy. They looked real upset. And, and there was, one, one of the places was empty. I thought I heard somebody stomping away into the night. But I looked around at the faces and everybody looked somewhere between just mystified and real unhappy, especially The Rock. He looked angry. He looked like somebody had accused him of being a liar or something. Oh man, he was riled up. It was tense in that room. The mood, oh, it was dark. And then finally, that Jesus fella, he finally had his, you know, his proper clothing back on and looked more like a, like a leader. And he finally said, he said the first sensible thing I heard him say the whole night. He said, don't let your hearts be troubled. And I thought, oh, that, that's a good idea. You know, try to, let's try to bring the mood back up here. Ah, oh, it's looking pretty dark. Don't let your hearts be troubled. But then, ah, oh, he just went and ruined it. It's like one step forward and then two steps back. Because then, get this, you won't believe what he said. He said, you trust in God, trust in me the same way. Trust in a human being, trust in a man who washes people's feet, trust in him the same way you trust in the most high God. Ah. Oh. Just don't get it. 
He kept on talking, though. This is when he started to say stuff about, you know, if he, if he had some kind of plan, I think this is when he started talking about, but I still, I didn't really understand what he was talking about exactly. Started talking about how, you know, he's in them and they're in him and everybody is in his father. I don't know what that means. But then he started talking about how he's got this plan. He said, you know, in a little while, you're not going to see me anymore. But then in a little while, you will see me again. He said he's going to go to his father's house. So I guess he was kind of planning on skipping town, getting to his father's house. He was, he was saying some other stuff. He said he was going to go prepare places for each one of them, and then he was going to come back and get them, probably like once the coast was clear. And see, I, I didn't learn until after that, I guess, the, the guards, they were, they were preparing to arrest him that night. So he was probably trying to, you know, be one step ahead of them. And as he was laying out this plan, he was, he was telling it real smug-like, real self-confident-like, like it was all going to work out. But, I mean, I guess it, it didn't work out right. The guards must have been one step ahead of him. But he keeps on talking. He's talking about vines and branches. He's talking about how there's no more servants and masters, but they're all friends now, and yada, yada, yada. I don't know exactly what his point was. Again, I think, it's, I think it was code. It was going way over my head, but I looked around, and it looked like those other Galileans, they looked pretty confused, too. So I, I felt a little bit better about myself. But then... And I know, I know all of this is, has been real weird up to this point, but then it got real weird because he started talking about how they were all going to be filled with joy, how they were all going to be real happy. They're going to find true happiness and joy, all oh, one big happy family or something. Here's this guy, this rabbi, this rebel, this Messiah figure, trying to be a leader of men, and all of us, you know, we're, we're looking for somebody who's going to fight the role, I, I mean, who's going to fight for us. You know, somebody who's going to lead a rebellion and, you know, get us our freedom. And here he's talking about how he's going to fill everybody with joy. Yeah, when's the last time you heard about a general or some leader of men, you know, rallying his people around some joyful happiness? It's just... <laughs> just doesn't make sense. This is, what, this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get some people together. You're supposed to incite them with rage. Tell them this is how we're going to get revenge on our enemies. And then they rally around you. They follow you to the ends of the earth. And they fight and they win. That's what you do. Joy, no. That's not, that's not a good plan. Joy, it's too patient. It's too kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't keep a record of wrongs. Joy doesn't seek to get revenge or settle accounts. No. It's almost like he just wanted to have a, a kingdom of a bunch of joyful little children or something. <laughs> Crazy. All this time we were, you know, refilling their wine and we were putting more bread out for them and just listening and, and getting more confused and it's almost like they didn't understand what the Passover was all about, you know? Passover is about, you know, fighting and taking your freedom back. You know, the first Passover? Yeah, God washed the feet of Pharaoh's army, right? Yeah, washed their feet all the way up to their foreheads. <laughs> yeah, Passover is about getting free busting out of slavery and going to the promised land, right? You're free, right? That's what Passover's about. We're all free. Well, I mean, except me, of course. I mean, I, I'm never going to be free. I'm going to be a slave, you know, just keeping on washing feet. But he kept on talking. And, you know, it's... I can kind of see how he had this great following because he, he must have just mesmerized people with all these contradictions. You know, I'm in you and you're in me and I'm going away. Oh, I'm coming back. I'm your servant. I'm your master. You know, it's almost like listening to him. You could just kind of 
forget who you were. Like you could just lose your whole life. And then probably like, I don't know, walk straight into a lake or something. <laughs> Makes your head spin the way that guy talked. That's when he started talking. Uh, he's talking a little bit more realistic, though. He said, you know, he, he was going to be arrested, probably, and he was going to lay his life down. Hmm. But then it was so funny the way he talked about it, though. It was almost like he was saying nobody could even lay a finger on him unless he gave permission. <laughs> emperor of the world, this one, you know, an emperor, yeah, dressed like a slave. <laughs> Oh, what a strange guy. <laughs> About that time, they were kind of wrapping things up. You know, we, we gave him more bread, and, and he took the bread, and he, and he gave thanks and broke it and started giving it out to the guys. And, uh, you know, eventually they left, and they were singing an old hymn, and, and they went out into the night. And Caleb and I went, and we, and we started cleaning up, and, you know, that was, that was the end of the night. I, you know, I heard just like, you guys heard. I heard about how he got arrested, and I heard about how he died. You know, I mean, everybody heard about that. He didn't deserve it, though, you know. He didn't deserve what happened to him. He, he, had, this, he had this way about him, this way of talking, this, just this way of being I can see why so many people loved him I don't understand why those authorities I don't understand why they hated him so much because I've heard the stories you know you've heard the stories too people were brought to him who were mute and they went away singing and praising God and people were brought to him who were lame and they went away dancing and hopping and skipping Now, three days later, his followers are here again, up there in that same room. I know they wanted me to make sure I had the doors totally secured. But I heard something just a little while ago. I'm not sure if you heard that. I heard, I think it came from up there. Shouts of surprise. I probably should get up there and check on that, but I don't know. I, I... I'm hearing something else too right now. (laughs) Laughter. (laughs) They're laughing up there. (laughs) Must be that joy. (laughs) Must be that joy he talked about. (sighs) Just a bunch of joyful children. But like I told the authorities, I don't know nothing 